If you're watching this, it's highly likely that you started your business over the course of the pandemic. And I am so excited that you're here. I'm so excited that you started your business. And you may have questions because you're using QuickBooks Self-Employed and you're like, hmm, am I doing this right? Do I uh, know how to categorize the transactions? And the list of questions goes on, right? Hi, my name is Adrena. I am the owner and accountant here at Accounting by Adrena. And in this video, I am going to give you the updated version of QuickBooks Self-Employed for the year 2021. Now, I did a different video for QuickBooks Self-Employed 2020, and that is going to be listed down in the description box below. It is probably one of my most popular videos, and I'm so excited that you're here watching the updated version of that video. So I don't necessarily talk about the same things that I did in the QuickBooks 2020. 20 tutorial. So make sure you go watch that first and then come back to this video because I'm going to give you a lot more information here and I get really excited about a few things that QuickBooks has to offer. And so I'm here for it and I know that you are too. I just want to give you a little bit of a warning. This is a content heavy video. So make sure you have a notepad and a pen or pencil ready because you're going to need to take some notes. Make sure you save this video because you might need to be referring back to this video multiple times as you're doing your bookkeeping throughout the month. Now, if you do have any questions, go ahead and leave them down below. I'm also going to leave links to uh, the video for how to pay your quarterly estimated tax payments. So uh, I will kind of, this is kind of like a series, right? So start with the QuickBooks 2020 tutorial and then do this video and then do the how to pay your quarterly estimated taxes and then you'll get all the information that you need. Let's just get to it. And if you have any questions, I'm here to help you along the way. As always with all of our videos, we're going to start with a test drive version and I am using an incognito browser for this only because I've been using QuickBooks on my desktop already and sometimes there's issues um, if you already have QuickBooks and you want to try a test drive version. So I want to give you that little tip in case you do want to try the, the test drive version because uh, maybe you want to give something a shot and you don't want to mess up anything that you have going with QuickBooks Self-Employed already. So anyway, uh, all that to say, we are in the Self-Employed test drive version. And I know that I had already given you uh, some ideas as far as customizing this uh, homepage here in my previous video. So I'm not going to get into that, but I do want to draw your attention to these quick links here, which are actually really helpful. So as soon as you log in, you can uh, come up here and download the mobile app if you haven't already. You can also fill out a tax profile, and this will be really handy when it comes to uh, paying your quarterly estimated tax payments as well as your annual taxes. So we'll get into that in just a moment. And then the third quick link is uh, to review the transactions that you have not previously categorized. So real quick, I just want to give you a little bit of an overview as far as the tax profile is concerned. You want to make sure that you do this before filing your quarterly estimated taxes or filing your annual tax uh, return, because this is going to be really useful when it comes to calculating your taxes uh, that are due. So a sidebar opens up after you click on the complete tax profile button, and it kind of walks you through the like steps that you would need to do as far as like starting any job anyway. So things that you should know, uh, marital status, filing jointly, number of dependents, um, your annual withholding, federal withholding, your spouse's first name, last name, annual W-2 income. So, uh, and if you're going to take the standard deduction or you're, if you're going to itemize deductions. There's also a tab up here that says projections and it's for uh, just this previous year. So you can always tell what year you're in by this little drop down here. Uh, and then it goes through each quarter basically as far as, so it, it uh, categorizes it by quarterly estimated tax payments, not necessarily like what we would consider standard quarters. As you can see, this is only two months. <laughs> uh, so uh, this is gonna be really helpful when it comes to uh, projecting for like how much you would be paying out for your quarterly estimated tax payments. I really like this feature, it's very nice. Um, you can also do the drop down and see like previous years. So that's really helpful and handy to have. 
there is another button up here that's called the tax checklist and I don't think I got into this last time, but it's basically you can come up here and click on tax checklist or you can come up here to the sidebar and click on taxes and it's pretty much the same. Um, same screen so for annual taxes it's only going to show the most recent um, one so that would be we're filming this in 2021 and that would be for 2020 tax year since uh, we haven't come up on tax season yet for 2021 quarterly will be um, the current year so uh, maybe this test drive version hasn't been updated yet but the, the screen that you should see would be the 2021 tax year. If you don't see it, make sure you click that drop down and uh, select 2021. So it'll show you exactly what your quarterly estimated uh, taxes were for each of these deadlines. And um, payments to date will have the list of um, when you like come up here to the transactions tab and you categorize everything, then it'll automatically recognize, oh, this was taxes for Q1 or for Q2 or Q3. So you'll have that list here. Um, obviously we just opened this test drive version. So there's really no other data in there other than like whatever is stock standard. Um, and so let's see, we're in, we're now in Q4, which means the taxes aren't due until January 17th, 2022. Um, and then it shows you a little bit about your tax profile. You can always edit it with this little uh, pencil icon and then any projections that you would have for your profit. Um, let's see. So then at annual tax time, you know, you would just come here and you can also like view all your information here. You can also download a report as I showed you in the previous video. So the next area that I want to go to, I kind of wanted to run through that very quickly because I want to spend a little bit more time on the transactions section. So you can uh, click on this link here that says review now, or you can click on this little button here that says uh, transactions. And um, one of the things that I am so excited about is this new feature called category and tags. Now, when I filmed my previous video, this wasn't updated yet in the self-employed test drive version. So I'm really excited that this is updated now here. And uh, I can't wait to show you what you can do with this because there's, it just opens up a whole new like window of opportunity for you as far as like uh, analyzing your finances and just keeping on track with your bookkeeping as well as your personal finances. So. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm super excited about. So I just scrolled down a little bit on the transactions tab. And as you can see here, these have already been categorized. So uh, earlier I showed you in that other video, you can categorize it as business or personal, or you can even split it. Um, when you do select split, you can say um, there's a specific amount or there's a percentage of a split that you want to do. So let's say you want to do 50% to business and the other 50% to personal. You can do this in QuickBooks Self-Employed. Um, but let's just say, for example, this is, sorry, I thought I was on the body shop one, but that's okay. Okay. So let's say that this Luke coffee shop was business. Um, $91. Oh my goodness. Please tell me you're not spending $91 at a coffee shop, but if you are, uh, make sure that you categorize that as meals. Um, and let's say maybe you met someone there and you had a business meeting and so you ended up having a lot of coffee. <laughs> or maybe it's not just a coffee shop and you have meals and things like that, but uh, you want to make sure that you're categorizing that as meals. So business and meals. And uh, effective through the pandemic, we were we're able to deduct 100% of meals for 2021 and 2022. That ends in, uh, I believe it's January 1st, 2023. So double check with your tax professional on that because things had changed over the past year and a half and it was really hard to keep up. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure you're well aware of that. Okay, so once you've categorized that as business meals, then you can move on to the next transaction. So let's say this is business and vehicle repairs. Great. Okay, so QuickBooks tries to get um, to know you and become a little more intuitive with how you how your transactions interact with like the PL, for example. So it's trying to just 
predict what your uh, category would be. And so this is just artificial intelligence at its finest. I love the fact that it already is getting to know you and how you would categorize each of these transactions. So the other thing that I want to mention is, okay, so you can do business and then you can do category. And then on top of that, if you click this little drop down here, you can actually create a tag. So let's just call this, um, this says income Beth. So let's call this project Beth. And then you would add project Beth. You can give it a color. Um, and that will automatically get tagged onto this income uh, when you select it. So then you can go ahead and click on save. And then you see this little icon here. That means that there's a tag on already included in this transaction. So all of these other transactions do not have a one by it. They're zero, which means there's no tags. But um, let me show you what that's good for in a little bit. Let's just go ahead and call this one um, Project, Project Christy, because I see that listed in the description. And let's give that a color green. Okay, and let's go ahead and click on save. And then let's come up here and find another income one. Um, okay, project E Kim. And you can literally call these things anything that you want to, as you can tell, because um, I'm just naming it as I go. And then let's save that. And then if you needed to, let's say you had a typo in that project E Kim, you can come up here to this button that says manage tags. And it should allow you to edit. There we go. Okay, so let's just edit this one. And let's call it project Kim and save. Now another th cool thing, okay, well you can delete tags too if you if you would like. You can create a group for tags and have like a bunch of tags under it. Anyway, it can uh, get a little complicated. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend having like too many options available to you because it would be hard to manage after a while. So one of the cool features is that you can now show a report on your tags. So you can come up here to uh, tag totals on the, I just clicked on the reports on the left-hand side and then view. And now all of a sudden you have a summary of each project. So according to each project, here's the income and it would list any expenses that you had tagged that specific project or whatever you wanna call it. And then there's the net income and loss. I absolutely 100% love this feature. It is so, so helpful. It is going to be so good for you guys because especially if you're working with like maybe five different clients and you need to um, use this one program that costs like $15 a month for this one client, then you would capture that here and call it Project Christy and it would show, you know, $15 times nine months or whatever. And then it could show you the net income and loss. I mean, there's there's so many opportunities here that um, obviously I'm bursting at the seams of because it's just, it's such a cool feature. And I'm so happy that they added this to the QuickBooks self-employed version. So another really cool thing is um, the fact that you can, okay, so SEO online advertising, that's obviously business, right? Um, Let's see if we can find something. Okay, Amtrak, let's just say this was a personal expense. So now all of a sudden you can add personal expenses. Um, this still doesn't look like it's updated but you can categorize your personal expenses as well. So uh, let's see if I can show you what this looks like. So when you click on um, the, the category here, there's, usually going to be a link when it's blue. Um, and then you can come up here and search all of your categories. So it's not showing all of your, all of the categories for whatever reason. Um, let's see, here we go. 
So these are all business categories actually. And I don't see any of the personal expenses, but when you do have the QuickBooks self-employed personal um, expense show up here, it just opens up a whole another level of opportunity as well. Um, because then you can start categorizing it like, you know, personal travel or, um, grocery shopping or uh, student loans or whatever the case may be, like there's going to be a lot more options as far as the categories are concerned when it comes to your personal spending. So that is also a really neat feature. I'm sorry that that's not included here in uh, the QuickBooks Self-Employed Test Drive version. All right, so next we're going to go to the Reports tab. And I wanted to... Um, show you. I know I've showed you guys in the previous um, video how to look at all of this information, but basically you can just download all of your information uh, for the, the tax year 2020. Let's say you wanted to look at tax year 2021. You can download this. It'll come in Excel, in an Excel version. Um, and so I want to quickly show you what that looks like. Um, I have it here. I did get a question on my channel, and so I just wanted to quickly address that. Um, when it comes to your mileage, I know that some people are using uh, this tab called Miles. And I think what happens is I don't have any personal experience with this, but what it looks like is these are coming through on the app and you can add in a trip, pers trip purpose. And so after every... Um, every drive, like you can basically just tell the app, like, this is what I did it for. It's for business. Or if it's for personal, you can recategorize it here in QuickBooks. Uh, let's say you made a mistake through the app and you don't know really how to fix it. Then you would come here on a desktop and I mean, online, and then um, you can edit it here. So it tells you the IRS standard mileage rate. And the question was in regards to like, what do you do with this information? What am I supposed to do with this information? So let me just uh, quickly address that one. It will show up here um, on this tax summary that I just downloaded from QuickBooks Self-Employed, that button that I showed you, and it's gonna show miles tracked. So as of the date that I downloaded this, you've had already 300, where did it go? 336 miles tracked. So, and I think what you're doing is uh, opening up the app on your cell phone before you uh, go on a business trip and, or a business drive, maybe you're meeting up with a client. That would be something that I would do. And I would say, start, you know, start GPS and then end GPS. And it would tell you that's how many miles. So when you come to the quarterly breakdown, it would be listed here as um, what is deducted, okay? So that's kind of how that works through um, QuickBooks. You would just make sure that you capture all of the deductions and uh, let's see. Yeah, so, you know, health insurance premium, health savings accounts, miles tracks. So all of the deductions, basically, you would capture that on your annual tax return. So again, Consult your tax professional about this if you have any more specific questions, as I don't have any personal experience using this mileage uh, feature. But I do know it exists, and I think it could be helpful if you do a lot of driving, especially for photographers, because I know photographers are going all over the place. I have one as a client, and uh, yeah, she's just driving all over the place. Um, so in this quarterly breakdown tab, what you could see is kind of like uh, these are all this is income. I don't know why this is blank, but usually that should be filled in. Um, income is all listed up here. And then here's your spending. And then here's what's actually going to be deducted in your tax return. So that's kind of how you read this report. That's why there's two sections here. Um, and sometimes, you know, like it's not, especially for car and truck, you're not going to get the full deduction. You're going to get whatever deduction you um, say that you use it for your business. Um, commissions, that looks like a full deduction, home office expenses, obviously, you're not going to get the full deduction of what you actually spend <laughs> for your home office there as well. Um, I think I did have another question come through as far as like, 
your home office expenses, what you can deduct. Um, and I would just say consult your tax professional on that because I don't want to give off like specific tax advice here. Um, but generally speaking, I would say like internet utilities, you can take a certain percentage of that. And um, there's a couple of different ways that you can calculate that. So that's why I want you to make sure that you're talking to a professional for your own specific um, for your own specific advice, because um, everyone is different. And so it's going to be a little bit different for everyone. Okay, so then they did, let's see here. It looks like the calculation is still 50% set up here for QuickBooks, but just know that meals are now 100% for these two years, 2021 and 2022. Um, so yeah, if you had any specific questions as far as like where, you know, what is included in this spending, you can just come over here. So this is the car and truck category. So you can come to this tab, car and truck, and then you'll see the breakdown of all of the expenses in there. So that is one of the things I like about it is just like, give me all the data. <laughs> I love the data this way I can analyze it and it's so much easier for me. Um, just to get hard data like that. All right, so I think that's going to be it for me today. I would love to hear back from you guys. If you had started your business over the course of the pandemic, um, let me know what kind of business you are and when you started and how your business is going. I'd love to have some conversations down in the comments. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, do feel free to put them in the comments as well. And I will see you guys in my next video.